You know, throughout the year, I really do plenty of comparing and contrasting and judging recipes against each other, picking favorites, but that is not what the holiday season is all about, my friends. It's about giving gifts and loving and appreciating one another, and I think I'm gonna translate that to today's video and just make a bunch of different cookie recipes, holiday or not, from different websites, from different chefs, Gordon Ramsay, Bon Appetit, Tasty, Babish, whoever it is, and just have a nice little cookie party at the end. No competition, no ranking against each other, just making some delicious cookies, and silently picking a favorite in my head. <laughs> Let's get right into this. So guys, we do have our work cut out for us today. We have a lot of cookies to make, but it should be really good fun, and we're going to start with Rie's Aquarium Cookies. I grabbed some sugar and Jolly Ranchers, flour, white chocolate chips, butter, an egg, and whatever type of candy that you want to put inside your cookies. Although I've seen this video numerous times, I was still quite intimidated because, let's face it, they look pretty difficult and involved, but I gotta be honest, they weren't all that hard. Rie did a really nice job at simplifying the recipe, making it with ingredients that everybody has, and really the only thing you might not have are the circular cutter molds, uh, but honestly, just use a cup or whatever you have that's a circle. Even I had to use a few different types of cups and bowls until I found the perfect size one for the inner circle, and feel free to save those little inner discs for a snack and just bake them off on their own. Now I am using Jolly Ranchers for the interior of my circles. You could probably use any similar type of hard candy, just nothing with like an icing or something that'll melt kind of weird. Uh, but once I had all of mine looking good, I popped it in a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes. It is vital to make sure that these are completely cooled before that you try to take them up off the paper or put candies in it, A, because it can get all deformed, and B, because it'll melt the candy that you put inside, and it'll just be a big mess. Once mine were completely cooled, though, I ran into a completely different issue. My Christmas candy that I was gonna put in does not fit. Even if I kind of flipped it inside out and had those ugly bottoms on the outside, it still wouldn't really fit. Uh, so just like the video, I'm just gonna use two different types of sprinkles. If all else fails, we have a red and green Jolly Rancher cookie, so we'll just use those. Make sure to pipe a nice little round of white chocolate to adhere both sides together. And once that was dry and they were shaken up really nice, we can set those aside and work on our second cookies of the day. Now next up on our menu is Babish's chocolate chip cookies, which have a few little interesting quirks. So I'm gonna grab some sugar and baking soda, butter and salt, some flour, some cinnamon, one egg, some chocolate chips, and some brown sugar. The first interesting part of this recipe is the browned butter. We actually have to use two sticks of unsalted butter for this. It does seem like a lot, but we are making a ton of cookies. And brown butter reduces quite a bit, because you have to cook out all that water, and then toast some of those milk solids at the bottom. Uh, which, by the way, this is not burnt. This is almost perfect, maybe a little bit overdone. But based on all the other recipes and videos I've looked up in the past, this dark amber color is pretty close to what you want. Now besides that, your dough comes together pretty easily if you have a stand mixer. Uh, he does add a little bit of cinnamon, which I found interesting, but it has to be delicious. I also used a cup of light brown sugar while a half cup of dark. He mentioned you can use whatever you want, and I figured that would give a nice little balance. The last intriguing thing is in your flour mix, he says to add a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna be honest, that's just a little too much for me. I feel like all you would taste is salt, so I cut back a little bit, maybe a half of a tablespoon. I promise you though, you will still taste salt in these cookies. For obvious reasons, I didn't add any nuts, but if that is your thing, by all means go for it. I bake these guys off in a 350 degree oven for about 16 minutes. These smell amazing, that brown butter comes out over everything else, and those are looking great, so let's move on to cookie number three. Third up, and probably what I am most worried about, are Rick's tie-dye cookies from Bon Appetit. I am quite scared of these because I feel like I'm just going to destroy this tie-dye effect that you're supposed to get, but we'll see when we get there. If you haven't caught on by now, we need some flour and salt. 
whole milk and sugar, powdered sugar, vanilla extract, some eggs and butter. Every cookie recipe is pretty much a variation of the other, yes. I think the most common mistake people probably make when making homemade cookies is that they don't whip together their butter and sugars for long enough. Not only are you adding in some air to get a flakier, crispier cookie, but you gotta let all that sugar dissolve in the butter too. At least that's been my experience anyways. As far as these go, we're gonna finish them with some all-purpose flour, just like the last two. And Rick mentions that you don't need to refrigerate this dough. I think I'm going to just because it's so soft and I don't want it to melt completely in the oven. So just about 20 or 25 minutes in my fridge, at which point we can take them back out, roll them to a nice even thickness, or what I thought was even anyways, and then cut out a few different shapes, because remember, these are only getting a tie-dye dip. They don't really need to be any specific shapes. If you have a gingerbread man, go for it. Actually, I encourage it. While those are cooling, I whipped up my glaze, which is a very simple mixture of some powdered sugar and some whole milk. You can also dye your frosting whatever color you want for whatever holiday or festivity you're making these for. Obviously, I'm going with red and green, or what I thought was red because it ended up being pink. And all I can say is that Cosmo and Wanda, you ain't slick. Eventually, I did get it a little bit of a darker red, so I very carefully drizzled out some frosting. It was looking okay when I swirled it with a toothpick, so I dipped my first cookie, and this looks absolutely terrible. <laughs> my cookies are not warm at all, so I know that's not an issue. I do think my frosting is probably a little too thin, so I added in a bit more powdered sugar. I cleaned out my plate and tried again, and this actually ended up working pretty darn well. I'm sure there's multiple ways you can go about tie-dyeing cookies or any type of food. This is pretty easy. It doesn't come out the prettiest every single time. The colors start to get muddled together. But for the most part, this method works pretty well. Last but not least, we have our good old friend Gordon Ramsay making his Christmas shortbread that I'm assuming is from his British or Scottish background. Please ignore the messy disaster in the background of this next shot. There was a lot going on. I grabbed some flour and vanilla extract, some sugar and butter, kosher salt, and some eggs. That's all you need. You might be as shocked as I was to find out that this was actually the most simple recipe out of all four of them. Everything is done in the bowl of a stand mixer. You can use a hand mixer if you have that as well. The one thing I always have been curious about is why is this called shortbread? It's closer to a sugar cookie than any type of bread, so if someone can enlighten me in the comments, I would appreciate it. I did want to let my dough sit in the fridge for at least an hour to solidify up so it doesn't melt at all in the oven, and pretty much all you have to do is get it into as perfect of a circle as you can, give a little decorative outside ring. He uses his thumb, so I'll do the same and just a sprinkling of some either caster sugar or finishing sugar, whatever you got, and then into a 350 degree oven for about 18 minutes. It has been a incredibly long day. I'm exhausted, my feet hurt, but we have a bunch of cookies to try out, so I'm excited. It's so nice not having to stress over comparing and picking my favorite. Uh, we're just gonna eat them to get if you have a cookie at home grab it. Let's let's have a cookie chat together I'm gonna go in the order. I made them just cuz why not look how cool this is Works as advertised it kind of reminds me of one of those old little like bubble games that had water in it You gotta get the hoop on the thing <laughs> I'm just curious to see if this breaks your tooth because obviously it's a hard candy and it kind of sounds strange to be in a cookie so So if you take a big bite, it gums up a little bit in your teeth. But for the most part, it's so thin. It's like glass pane thin at this point. Uh, it, it's really not a problem to bite through. Um, it doesn't get stuck in your teeth, but if you take a huge chunk, it does kind of like ball up a little bit. The flavor of the outside is good though. I enjoyed that. Now we have Babish's chocolate chip cookie. I'm interested to see how this compares to Tasty's perfect cookie that took like days. It still smells so darn good. You actually get a little bit of that cinnamon too. 
This is just amazing. <laughs> the brown butter mixed with the chocolate, the little hints of cinnamon you get as you're finishing the bite. I wish this was in that disaster of a cookie video <laughs> a few months ago. How about some holiday tie-dye cookies? I don't love how some of the frosting kind of iced over a little bit. You get that uh, like powdered look. But overall, they, they don't look too bad. By the way, trust me with the salt. Do not put the whole tablespoon. I'm still tasting it from the last cookie. How about a snap test? Very nice. This is pretty much what I hope a sugar cookie always looks like in the middle. A nice golden bottom, a nice evenly yellowish coating, and some sugar on the top. How is anybody supposed to hold a diet in the holiday season? I don't understand. I'm going on a week-long trip in January, and I'm trying to slim down a little bit, um, but these aren't helping, that's for damn sure. Super good. The flavor in the cookie part is great, and that nice little thin crispy layer of the um, powdered sugar icing, really good. Number four on my way to diabetes is Gordon Ramsay's shortbread, which smells really good. There's just not a lot going on in the recipe, so I'm kind of interested to see how it ends up being. I love the texture of this. It's super soft and delicate. I just kind of wish there was more happening. Like maybe some cinnamon, uh, maybe some clove, allspice, something like that. This just feels like a starting point. Like here, here's a great recipe. It's like very mild, just do whatever you want to it. All in all, I'm pretty happy. All of them turned out really good. Thank you for coming to my cookie social. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit me up with a big like. Happy holidays to whatever you celebrate. Go hug a friend or family member for me. I will see you right back here next week for one more video before the year ends. And until then, peace. And my money super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision We can make it out tonight